Hello, in this video we're going to go over a problem from 2005 International Math Olympiad. So here is the problem. Find all positive integers n such that there is a unique integer a between 0 and n factorial with the following property. n factorial divides a to the n plus 1. So basically what it's saying is that there is a unique a mod n factorial that a to the power of n plus 1 is divisible by n factorial. So I'm going to walk you through the process by which I obtain the solutions. So I'll start from different integers. For n equals 1, clearly that's uh, possible because if you have n equals 1, there's only one integer between 0 and 1, so that's easy. For n equals 2, what I need is 2 to divide a squared plus 1. When does that happen? When a is equal to 1. And that's also possible. For n equals 3, we need to have 3 factorial divides a cubed plus 1. Now if we take this one, mod 2 and mod 3, we need these two to be 0 mod 2 and also 0 mod 3. Okay, so mod 2, a and a cubed are the same, so that means a must be 1 mod 2, and the same happens mod 3 as well. a and a cubed are the same, so that would also have to be, in this case, negative 1 mod 3, which means a would have to be negative 1 mod 6. So this uh, is also going to happen for uh, 3, so that's also possible. So a is in fact 5. Now once I saw negative 1, I realized that if I look at n factorial, that's also going to divide negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 if n is odd. Okay, so there is a solution a for uh, when n is odd, and that solution is a equals n factorial minus 1, but this is only going to work when n is odd. But if n is even, let's say n is 4, 4 factorial must divide a to the power of 4 plus 1, that already is an issue because 4 dividing a to the 4th plus 1, that's not going to happen. So that eliminates all the even cases. So if n, and it has to be greater than or equal to 4, is even, then n factorial does not divide a to the power of n plus 1 because a to the fourth plus 1 is never going to be 0 uh, mod 4. In fact, a squared plus 1 is never 0 mod 4. You could just test that for uh, four different possibilities of a mod 4. They are 0 plus minus 1 and 2. And when you square them and add 1, you're never going to get 0. So that means n is odd or n equals 2. So we got uh, n equals 2, that does work. Now n equals n odd may or may not work. So let's test some uh, numbers. 5 factorial divides a to the fifth plus 1. Let's write it down. We have 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. I have to take it mod 8, mod 3, and mod 5. So mod 5 is actually relatively easy. So this would have to be 0 mod 5. So this gives us a would have to be negative 1 mod 5, mod 3, a to the 5th plus 1, mod 3 must be 0. a cubed is a, so this would be a cubed times a squared, which is a times a squared, which is a cubed, which is a. So that would have to be negative 1 mod 3 as well. Now when you look at mod 8, if you do the computation kind of similar argument, we have a to the fourth times a plus 1. V of 8 is 4. So we get this should be 0 mod 8, which gives us that a would have to be negative 1 mod 8. So that means a would have to be negative 1 mod uh, 8 times 3 times 5, or in other words, uh, there is a unique a. So a would be uh, 5 factorial minus 1. That's the unique a. So let's say, let's summarize what we have done so far. For n equals 1, it did work. 2, it did work. 3, it worked. And 5, it worked. And we know that 4, 6, 8, none of these are going to work, etc. Okay, so at this point I thought it's probably going to be uh, prime numbers. Now, let's see what we can do for prime numbers. If n is prime, 
then we need this. We need n factorial to divide 8 to the power of n plus 1. The good thing about primes is that I know phi of n factorial is going to be phi of n, because n is prime, times phi of n minus 1 factorial. So this is going to be n minus 1 times phi of n minus 1 factorial. So what that means is that this guy does not have any factor of n. So phi of n factorial and n are in fact relatively prime. I know that a to the power of phi of n factorial is 1 mod n. And what do I know now? I also know that a to the power of n is negative 1 mod n factorial. And this is n factorial. Now if I look at this one, then I can take a linear combination of the exponents because n and n factorial, phi of n factorial are relatively prime. So I could say k times n plus l times phi of n factorial is 1 for some integers k and l. This is what we call Bezu's lemma. So that tells us that if I do um, a to the power of k n, this is a, plus l times phi of n factorial, I would get a to the power of n is negative 1, so that's negative 1 to the power of k, and a to the power of phi of n factorial is just 1, and this is mod n factorial. Now, because of this equality, and I know this is even, so that means k is odd, so this is negative 1. k is odd. So what does that give us? It tells us that the unique a that works for primes is in fact negative 1. Now what if a, uh, n is not prime? So let's say uh, if n is not prime, let's say n equals 9. So what happens when n is equal to 9? So we want to fi find out whether there is a unique a that a to the power of 9 plus 1 is divisible by 9 factorial. So how do we deal with that? Well, what I thought is that it's probably going to have to do something with the fact that if I look at 8 factorial, I know 8 factorial divides a plus 1 when a is negative 1 mod 8. And I also know that 9 divides 8 factorial. So if you look at this one, then we can say, well, a to the power of 9 plus 1 is equal to a plus 1. I can make sure that this is divisible by 8 factorial. And if I write down 8 factorial, 8 factorial has a factor of 3 here, and it also has a factor of 6 here. Now, these two combined give us a 9. So 9 divides 8 factorial. But if I look at the rest of it, I get 8 to the power of 8 minus 8 to the power of 7 plus 8 to the power of 6 minus plus, etc. If I look at that expression, 8 to the power of 8 minus 8 to the power of 7 plus 8 to the power of 6 minus 8 to the power of 5th plus a to the 4th minus a cubed plus a squared minus a plus 1, I know that a is negative 1 mod, mod 8 factorial. And because 9 divides 8 factorial, we get that this mod 9 is 1 minus, and the next one is minus 1, because a is negative 1, so minus negative 1 to the power of 7th, which is negative 1, plus 1, etc. So this is going to be exactly 9, which means this is divisible by 9. So I have this, is, uh, this portion is divisible by 8 factorial, this portion is divisible by 9, and when you multiply, we get 9 factorial. Okay, so now, how do we solve the problem in general? So we talked about what happens if n is equal to 1 or, uh, or prime. In this case, we know that there is a unique solution, so we are done with this case. If n is, um, at, uh, uh, let's say, at least 6 is composite, because I want to use the fact that um, n divides n minus 1 factorial. So we also talked about n equals 4, so n equals 4 doesn't work. Let's say n is at least 6 and it is composite. So now we know that n factorial uh, is n divides n minus 1 factorial. And this is very easy to check because when you write down n as product of two integers, both of them appear here. There's a little bit of a more argument that need to, needs to be made, but it's not a very difficult, uh, difficult task. Now, since I know that, I'm going to take a to be 
uh, essentially n minus 1 factorial minus 1. If I take this one, now a to the n plus 1, oh, and this is uh, odd also, because I know that even doesn't work. We already talked about even. This would be a plus 1 times a to the power of n minus 1 minus a to the power of n minus 2 plus etc. plus 1. Now this one mod n minus 1 factorial is 0. And the rest of it, a to n minus 1 minus a to the power of n minus 2 etc. If you take that mod n, you get n, which is 0. Because a is negative 1 mod uh, n, because n divides n minus 1 factorial. And that tells us that n factorial divides n to the power of n plus 1. Now, there is also another number that uh, satisfies this property. If you take a equals n, minus, n factorial minus 1, that also satisfies n factorial divides a to the power of n plus 1. So that means the number that we want to satisfy that condition is not unique. So that means the answer is either a equals 1 or it is a prime. I will see you in the next video.